Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining me. I'm just going to start the day with some space making, breathing and moving. So it's so beautiful to carve out space when we wake up, when we start our day, when we're getting everything going to set the stage for the rest of the day. It's like we're starting the day appreciating our body, you know, appreciating a um, bit of the self, self relationship. It's a beautiful place to give a little gratitude as well. So I'm really grateful for my new property, our new land in Australia. It's been really nice waking up here. Um, my mornings are exponentially getting longer because I'm more excited to wake up. So it's really beautiful. That's my gratitude today. Fall in Australia. Actually, they don't say fall here, they say autumn. So autumn in Australia, it's beautiful. So maybe taking a couple moments to close your eyes down. Connect with your breath. So just noticing, observing. And something that you're grateful for. And just notice the resonance of that. You know, gratitude, we hear about it a lot. Sometimes it can sound cliche, but really the resonance of gratitude is, is really powerful. And let the corners of your mouth turn up into a smile. And it's also a beautiful reminder that we can dip into that whenever. And the more that we do, the easier it is to come back to, and the easier we can connect with this, this energy of appreciation. We begin to pattern it. One more inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Go ahead and open your eyes up if they were closed. And I haven't moved my body yet today, so you're just welcome to move along with me. This is all suggestions, what feels good in my body. So do, um, do, do what feels good, leave the rest. And let's place our hands like, like we have a gift in our hands like this. Like the hands are closed and you just open them up. This is Pushpa Puta Mudra. It's like an offering, a handful of flowers. So we can kind of envision that, um, that gratitude, that feeling of gratitude as if we could offer it up to someone. So Pushpa Puta Mudra, an offering or a handful of flowers. So I think this is a really sweet mudra. Mm. Next inhale, kind of bring it forward. Lift the arms up, hands can touch. And exhale, hands to heart center. Open the palms up. Inhale, scoop forward. Hands up, hands touch. And exhale, hands heart center. Really press hand into hand. And then once more, inhale, open the, uh, the palms and then lift the hands up. And exhale, hands, heart center. Let's bring the hands all the way down to the knees and take some spinal rolls. So you can make them as little or as big as you'd like. So I'm gonna take really little ones because my back's sore today. My whole body's a little sore. I did, got really excited and did some running and weightlifting yesterday when I haven't done it in a while. And then go to the other side. So you can make it as big as you like. Maybe bend the elbows, get the head involved, or real small. And let's slide the hands forward into a, a long-armed child's pose. Bring the finger, come onto the fingertips so the arms are lifted up. The knees can be together, the knees can be wide. We're gonna take a side body stretch. So 
begin to walk the hands over towards the right. You can pick the belly up so it comes over the thighs. And then take the left hand on top of the right hand. An option if you would want to go a little bit more than you can gaze under the left armpit and then peel it up a little bit. Like you're just kind of peeking your heart out from underneath. We'll get a little more length in the side body. You can also think about gluing your left hip down. It doesn't have to touch, but it's just heavy and going in that direction. Let's switch sides. So up onto the fingertips, reaching as far as you can to the left. Right hand comes over the left. So big side body stretch on the right side. If you do want a little bit more, then you can peek under the right armpit and kind of peel the heart open just a little bit. Keep the right hip heavy and breathe. Slowly walking, hands together. Chin to chest, we're gonna roll up into child's pose. I mean, sorry, tabletop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a cat-cow variation. So there's lots of little things we can think about. First, let's think about our hands. So the hands, whenever we push back, we're gonna push, really push into the hands rather than be guided by the hips, really push the hands towards the top of the mat and let the hips come back. But we're gonna think the action is coming from the hands. And then gaze forward and then bring your like gecko palm, like kind of almost like you're clawing at the ground and then pull yourself forward. So we're gonna find a little bit of resistance here. And then you can come up slightly. And then exhale, push away. So you like you have resistance going each way. So make this challenging for yourself because we want to activate. Inhale, drag yourself forward, but make it really challenging. And then exhale back. Now we're gonna add some wave in the spine. So when you come forward, round the back, tuck the chin to the chest, come forward. And then arch the back, lift the tailbone up as you push. You can go all the way back to child's pose or almost, and then tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin as you pull yourself forward. And then open the heart, bend the elbows, push yourself back. All right, so you kind of know where we're going. Now just play with it. Notice how much more activation this has than just a regular cat cow. We're really wanting to use that resistance and activation. Building some heat. And then any organic movements. If you'd like to switch it around, lift one arm, lift the other, or big circles. Just feeling into the body. But do continue to think about that connection with the hands, how you can push and pull yourself from that space. And let's come all the way forward onto the belly and bring the hands down into Sphinx pose. So forearms down, shoulders over elbows, like a 90 degree angle there. Lift both feet and pull them back a little bit like someone's pulling on your toes. Roll the shoulders back. Heart is open, sternum lifts. And then elbows drag back towards the hips as you Pull the sternum forward even more, so getting lots of length. Breath here. Let's take a couple lion's breaths, so out with the tongue out, exhales. Inhale. Inhale. Press the pubic bone down, protect the low back. Beautiful, release. Bring 
the arms wide into like a big Y shape and then push up from here. So similar action in the torso and the rest of the body, but different in the arms. So pressing down, pulling the arms back towards you as the heart moves forward. Press the pubic bone down, but you'll have a bit more activity in the back. So you start to feel some heat in the back. And slowly come down. You can leave the arms in a big Y or you can bring them in the, in the, to a T. And let's take the right arm up, right elbow up. Bring the left cheek down onto the ground and then bend the right leg. We're gonna push into the right hand and then touch the right toes down behind us. So different option, you can touch with a bent leg or you can leave the leg long and reach out as far as you can. So different options, bent leg, straight leg. So you may be feeling this in the low back, um, in the left pectoral muscle upper back, lots of different places. And slowly roll back and let's switch sides. Oof, it's a good one. Steady breath. And slowly roll back, hands underneath the shoulders, push back, downward facing dog. And take a moment, pedal it out. Bend the knees, belly to the thighs. Find some buoyancy here. And the similar thing that we did in cat cow, we're gonna do in plank pose and downward dog. So chin to the chest. I'm going to push down into the ground as I roll forward, leading with the back of the heart. The hands kind of push towards the top and towards the ground. And then the knees will come almost down, arch the back, push, push into the hands. Downward facing dog. Come to the toes, chin to chest, round the back, really push into the earth so you can round. And then when the shoulders come over the wrist, the elbows, or sorry, the knees come down and you push the ground away. So begin to move like you, this can be like a wave, waving forward, and then waving back. The knees can come all the way to the ground as well, if that's better for you. Once more, inhale, wave forward. And exhale, this time bring the knees down and wave back, hips to heels but we're gonna sit onto the heels. Hands to heart center. And then inhale, open up, Pushpa Puta Mudra. Exhale here. Next inhale, we're gonna push the offering forward and then stand up onto the knees. And exhale, hands behind the back. Roll the shoulders back, bend the elbows. Now we're gonna take a little bit of a heart opener here. I don't want you to dump into your low back. So we're not like this. Tailbone still lengthening down and we're just opening the upper part of the body, the sternum. Elbows come together. They're not gonna touch. They're just going in that direction. And then maybe a slight gaze up, slight heart opener. Then we're gonna come into rabbit pose. So the hips begin to sink back. The forehead is gonna find the ground as close to the knees as you can then let the arms come over. Steady breath. Think about how much weight you have in your head. You only want about probably 30% there. The rest is in the legs and the knees. And then slowly bring hips to heels, child's pose. Feeling breath 360 degrees. So in the chest, the sternum, the left and the right ribs, the back of the heart and the kidney band as well. 
big breath circumference. Reach the arms forward, chin to chest, press into the hands as you round up. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Take a moment here, find stillness, soft bend in the knees. And then actively pull the feet apart, see how that feels, see how that energizes things. So we're not actually moving the feet, but as if you were going to move them from to the side of the mat. Notice how that really lights up the legs. And you can have a slight internal rotation of the hands if you just want to feel something else, a little micro movement here, as if they were turning towards each other just a little bit, activating the arms as well. Doesn't that shift things a bit? And then inhale, right leg lifts. And exhale, step through in between the thumbs. Bring the back knee down, and we're going to turn it all the way in. So kind of rotate it around, come to the knee and then rotate it around and we're going to sit down on the heel. So sage pose, right arm comes on the inside of the right leg, maybe grab for the toe, maybe grab for the ankle. This action here, we're going to push the arm into the leg, the leg into the arm so we can twist over towards the left. Maybe the left hand comes to the hip an option here. Lots of action right here. You should feel, feel yummy in the groin, that good hurt. Maybe the left hand wraps around the back and you can grab for the thigh. It's a sage pose. Steady breath. Nice deep morning stretch. Finding some opening here. Slowly release left hand back of the mat and we're going to reach the right arm out, left, right leg long. And then send the hips forward, head, heart, hand come back. A little bit of a stargazer here. And exhale, spiral the heart down, right hand plants, tripod down dog, left leg lifts. Exhale, step in between the thumbs, the back knee plants. We're doing the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna swivel on the knee, that's a better cue. Swivel on the back knee and then take a seat down. And you can move this whole thing shorter, closer in if you'd like. Grab for the toe, the big toe. I like to take my peace fingers around the big toe or the ankle, see what feels good. The main thing here is that we're pressing one into another. We're finding that activity and that leverage. Maybe right hand to right hip and gaze towards the right. If you'd like to take a bind, then maybe the right hand comes behind the back and for the left inner thigh. Sending breath to sensation, wherever that's living for you right now. And slowly release. Right hand back of the mat, stargazer pose. So reach out. Left leg long, left arm long. And take a bit of that back bend, send the hips forward. Head, heart, hand move back. Spiral heart down, left hand plants. Downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Let's take a big step through to in between the hands. We're going to do a back and a forward lunge. So this is going to be, we'll call this a forward lunge. Back lunge, we're going to bend the back leg straight and the front leg. It doesn't have to go all the way straight, but we're lengthening the, the front leg. Inhale, front lunge. And exhale, back lunge, also kind of like a pounce. You can think of it that way. Flex the toes back. Inhale forward. And exhale back. 
Inhale, forward, plant the right hand, or plant the left hand, lift the right arm up, and pull back on the right hip crease here. You can still find some movement, maybe cactus this top arm, reach back. And then exhale, wide leg forward fold. So we rotate towards the left, toes are in slightly, heels are out. Wiggle in the hips as you fold forward. Options, hands to the feet. I've been liking to bring the hands out long so it's like a wide leg forward fold, uh, down dog. And then maybe some waves in the spine. Breath. And let's spiral towards the back of the mat. Downward facing dog. And just take a moment here. Maybe finding um, the activity in the hands and the feet again, as if they were pushing out a little bit. The hands turning, actually turning in just slightly, like they're rotating towards one another and the legs pushing, the feet pushing out towards the corner of the mat so you can feel that activation. Inhale, left leg lifts. And exhale, step through in between the hands. So we're moving with breath, front lunge, gazing forward. And then exhale, bend the back knee, lengthen the front leg as the front toes flex. Whew. Inhale, forward and exhale back. This is an excellent place for blocks under the hands. Inhale forward. You can also do this with the back knee down if that's better for you this morning. And back. And inhale forward. And let's go into wide leg forward fold. Side of the mat. Let's take a twist this time. So option, you can plant the left hand just straight down underneath your gaze, or you can also take it to the right foot. So either way, but the right arm is gonna come up, yeah? So taking a twist here. It can be nice to take the right hand to the sacrum so you can kind of see where your um, pelvis is in place, in space. Sometimes you want to lift it or shift it a little bit. Just a kind of good to know. And then switch sides wherever you are, either grabbing the ankle or pressing down on the floor. And release. Continue to shimmy the feet, toe heel, toe heel, forward fold, middle of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, bring the hips towards the heels. So optional little balance here. You can bring the hands to the blocks, hands to the knees, or maybe hands to Pushpa Putta Mudra. Squeeze the legs together will be helpful. Maybe coming back to that gratitude. Can you hold gratitude even when things are a little bit shaky? Let's move the mudra forward and up. And exhale, hands come to heart center as the booty finds the ground. Let's bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana. Forward fold. Release the back of the neck. Just noticing all the different sensations. I can kind of feel this all through my back, sides of the spine. And slowly lifting up. Let's take Sukhasana. Just a simple seat. Any spirals in the spine, any last movements that you'd like. 
noticing any space you've created. And just a reminder that just to meet ourselves and to move in our body, it doesn't have to take it doesn't have to take a long time. Sometimes we can just come and meet ourselves, do a little exploration, what's going on today. Especially when we do some kind of different poses and things that we don't, don't often do. It lets us meet ourselves in a different way. So, a little gratitude for yourself, eh? For showing up. Often this is the hardest part. So, let's bring the hands together. Thumbs at the third eye seat of our inner wisdom, a part of ourselves we're trying to get to know just a little bit better each time we come to the mat. Let's bow forward and together we say namaste. Mm. Thank you all for joining me. Again, my name is Cole Chance, and thank you for letting me be part of your practice. If you want to learn more about my retreats, trainings, and other offerings, then head over to colechanceyoga.com. Check you next time.